Situated in Pennsylvania's capital city, Harrisburg Mall would be the first enclosed mall in the region to open in 1969 with three anchors. For over 50 years, it would be the largest mall in the city before finally closing in January 2024. A Dauphin County mall that has been around for more than 50 years is closing its doors for good and its shop owners are being told to move out by next month. Store owners at the Harrisburg Mall are being told to move out by next month. We are small business owners and I'm here for over like 20 years I'm in this mall but they have to do what they have to do. Fox 43 obtained the letter the mall's owners, St. John's Properties, sent to tenants notifying them they must vacate the mall by 5 p.m. on January 31st, 2024, citing the start of redevelopment of the Harrisburg Mall early next year. Opening in 1969, the mall that was once bustling is largely vacant, with many retail spaces now empty. It's a sign of changing times that is forcing some store owners to rethink what to do next. It's uh, like a scary. But personally, I think mostly we have to think something different, not the retail anymore. Everybody's shopping online. We can't compete with the uh, online market. And with the mall in its current mostly vacant state, shoppers are not surprised about its demolition. It's surprising that it's, it's coming up as soon as it is, but I, I saw this coming up down the line eventually. The land is expected to be used as new retail and multi-use business spaces. The only store that will remain is Bass Pro Shops. Swatera Township officials say demolition permits will likely be issued mid to late January, but no official land development plan has been submitted as of yet. St. John's Properties did not respond to Fox 43's phone call request for comment. Ryan Yee, Fox 43 News. In April 1968, plans for the twin-level multi-million dollar mall were announced. The nearly 900,000 square foot building was to feature fountains, garden courts, air conditioning, and other features specifically designed for the mall. Plans for the mall had begun back in 1966, just two years after a large mine on the site had been discovered when a bulldozer operator felt the ground shifting below him and managed to escape before an 8 foot deep pit collapsed. This hole would reveal the entrance into a medium-sized limestone cave which would be dubbed the Crystal Paradise due to the uncommon pure white formations throughout the cave. But, as it was too close to the surface for the parking lot to be supported, the cave was filled in one year later. Interestingly, a second cave named the Big Pit was also discovered next to Crystal Paradise, but that one was able to remain untouched where it remains below the parking lot to this day. The first anchor to join the mall was Gimbel's, with a modern building that was called the Store of the Future by its designers. It would open on October 9, 1969, with the cutting of a ribbon made of flowers by the chain's regional president, while State Governor Raymond Schaefer cut the Wanamaker's department store ribbon. Soap opera star Eileen Fulton was also on hand for the opening ceremony, and was noted as hosting special events for the first two months, including a new video phone demonstration by the Bell Company. Other celebrities were also said to come and host various instructional programs, such as world casting champion Bruce Brubaker and big game hunter Ted Lick. The mall was one of four buildings in the state that was powered and run by Gas Total Energy, where everything, including heating, cooling, and electricity, was run by gas provided by a 100 by 60 foot generator running beneath the building. Starting in 1975, the annual March of the Dimes Telethon would be held inside the Harrisburg Mall and was hosted by comedian Soupy Sales. They would host events such as disco dance-offs and Farrah Fawcett look-alike contests over the 18-hour fundraiser. Game show host Bob Eubanks would take over hosting duties in 1980 and 83, while Hollywood Square star Peter Marshall hosted the 1981 Telethon before they moved elsewhere for the 1984 one. 
The first big crime to occur at the mall came in 1976, when Dronus Flannery shot and then sexually assaulted a woman he abducted from the mall parking lot. It was 16 hours later that passerby heard her cries coming from the field he left her in. In court, the judge lamented he could not impose a death sentence, instead giving the man 35 to 70 years. Gimbals would be the first anchor to leave in 1977, citing poor sales. It was quickly purchased and reopened as a Hess's department store the following year and would become the second largest store in that company's portfolio. In 1979, the mall was attempting to lure shoppers back in with a 1950s music tribute headlined by Frankie Avalon after the nearby Three Mile Island incident heavily affected the mall and surrounding area in March that year. A number of mall merchants were a part of the group to sue over the nuclear accident, and the group's president stated the mall had a markedly decreased traffic after, with people too afraid to go shopping. In December that year, three men using stolen credit cards were chased out of the Hess's store. Into the 80s, security troubles continued, peaking in December 1984 with two incidences just a week apart. First, after guards tried to remove three disorderly young men from the mall, a crowd of 100 formed and a fight erupted, causing six guards to be attacked. The second incident involved one of the same young men and a different friend were apprehended while shoplifting and another crowd formed to try and stop them being arrested, resulting in 50 police officers responding to help out. In 1987, Harold Johns was arrested after robbing the Hamilton Bank inside the Harrisburg Mall. In custody, he would confess to at least five other mall robberies across the country. While the mall was still holding some small events such as ugly tie contests, I honestly couldn't find many positive news articles into the 90s, when yet again the Hamilton Bank was robbed. Wearing a baseball hat that said detective on it, a man entered the home of the bank manager and placed what he said were explosives onto her husband and child, forcing her to take almost $90,000 from the bank. The FBI would get involved and arrest Earl David Smith, who had also committed a string of mall bank robberies from 1989 until 1993. Nineteen ninety three was the year the mall underwent its first renovation, updating its skylights, adding marble floors imported from Portugal and Italy, new exotic plants, a glass elevator, and bringing in new stores at a cost of four million dollars. The following year, Hess's would change to Hex after the companies merged. The five screen AMC theater would also close this year. In 1995, Strawbridge and Clothier would take over the John Wanamaker chain, and the distinct eagle statues that sat in all Wanamaker stores were donated, including the one at Harrisburg, which went to the Dover Area High School, who had an eagle as their mascot. That year, the mall held signings for the hometown band The Badleys, who had just signed a record deal, along with an art show by Eve Plum, best known as Jan from The Brady Bunch Show. In 1997, the mall held a sci-fi film and comic show that featured appearances of Star Wars actors Peter Mayhew and John Hollis, who played Chewbacca and Lobot, respectively. At the same time as the festival, an investigation was launched into allegations that Penn State football star Curtis Enos accepted a $400 suit purchased by a store agent at the Champ store at this mall, which was a violation of NCAA rules. He would be found guilty and barred from college football, but would enter the NFL the following year. The mall continued to hold events and tried to draw on shoppers, bringing in animatronic dinosaurs and a live event of the Disney Channel show Going Wild with Jeff Corwin. But by the new millennium, the mall filed for bankruptcy and remained open under an investment trust. And again, bad publicity continued on for the mall when pastor in training Christopher Crepata was arrested on two separate incidents of peeping on women in the Harrisburg Mall, including photographing a 17-year-old girl trying on dresses. The same year, a worker at the Hex store was murdered by her ex-husband before he fled to his home country of Egypt, 
He was actually back and died in prison four years later. In 2002, a new apparel shop opened inside the mall that was operated entirely by 40 high school students from the Business and Industry program from Harrisburg High School. The store would operate until at least 2005. In 2003, the mall was finally purchased by Feldman Properties, who sank $77 million to revitalize it by updating the concourse, adding new anchors Great Escape Movie Theater and Boscoffs, and renaming the mall to simply Harrisburg Mall. That same year, Bass Pro Shops would move into the newly vacated Lord & Taylor, expanding two more floors for a total of 225,000 square feet. Mickey Rooney and his wife were on hand for Boscoff's ribbon cutting and a show, while a Lucy Ricardo impersonator appeared for the store's Lucy's Chocolate Factory line. The mall continued to bring in other stars, including multiple signings and rallies for the Pittsburgh Steelers, such as a post-Super Bowl event in 2006. In 2007, CBS held a casting call for their reality television series at the mall, where people were invited to come and try out for shows like Survivor and The Amazing Race. In 2011, perhaps one of the biggest events came when thousands attended a performance by Nickelodeon's iCarly star, Jeanette McCurdy. In 2010, the Harrisburg Zombie Walk moved their second annual event in the mall after the city wanted to charge them fees to have the free event downtown. They would hold the walk here for three years before moving over to Lancaster. Also, perhaps inspired by this event, on Black Friday in 2011, a group of people dressed up as zombies in protest of the consumerism of the day, resulting in one woman's arrest for refusing to remove her makeup. Despite all these events, the mall had continued to struggle, with the long-stalled Phase 2 of the renovations finally being completely abandoned in 2009. Those would have seen a section of the northern concourse renovated into a downtown streetscape and three more exterior connected stores added. One of which was to be a Barnes & Noble who pulled out after the building was never finished by the mall. Yet again, they would default on their loans and the mall was purchased by a joint venture real estate firm. The Harrisburg Mall's getting a new look. You'll remember back in July, the mall held a ceremony to tear down the unfinished Sega Sports Restaurant. Well, tonight we know more about the mall's plans and who it's trying to target. News 8's Harrisburg reporter Portia Johnson has the story. For years, Harrisburg Mall hasn't changed. There have been plans to add outside stores, even a sports restaurant. But due to financial struggles, the plans didn't stick. Do you think the mall needs a makeover? Um, yeah, I think more stores need to be put in here. What would you like to see? Um, maybe a Hollister. I like what's on Body Central, and they don't have it at this mall. H&M, I don't know if they have the store like that here. Or... They don't have H&M. Oh, and I like that store. Women spoke, and now the mall is listening. In June, Terry Richardson joined a partnership and took over the mall. Currently, there are 30 stores in place that cater to women, and he is hoping to add at least 10 more. Richardson says more food vendors will be coming too. He is confident it will bring more shoppers to the mall. He says on Saturday, which is considered the busiest day, the mall only attracts an average of 18,000 shoppers. Currently, there's 100,000 square feet of vacant space in this mall. Richardson says that's because the previous owner created store space he did not have tenants for. But he says those days are over. Our goal, of course, is, is every landlord's goal is to achieve 100% occupancy. In addition to more retailers. Security of the unit, too. 
The mall will refocus its security hours to Friday and Saturday evenings, brighten the lights and upgrade security cameras. A lot of big plans with one goal, reviving Harrisburg Mall. In Harrisburg, Portia Johnson, News 8. In 2014, the mall became a one-time wedding venue for a couple after they were unable to book a regular location in time. The bride said she didn't care where they got married, whether it be in the backseat of a car or the food court of the mall, which got them thinking, and they decided to reach out to the mall, who offered the venue free of charge. Ironically, Eastern Hills Mall in New York, which closed just two weeks before Harrisburg, would also hold a wedding in its food court the year prior between two workers there. 2020 would prove to be the final blow for the mall. First, Great Escape Theaters had closed for the pandemic and stopped paying rent on their property, owing over $550,000 in back rent when brought to court. Macy's would also vacate at this time, leaving the mall with just Bass Pro as its sole anchor. In 2021, demolition permits were approved for the three empty anchors, and in 2023, plans were unveiled for the entire mall's redevelopment. Bass Pro, which draws in around 3 million visitors per year, will remain while the rest of the mall will be leveled for 12 new mixed-use buildings to be constructed. Closing out after 55 years, Harrisburg Mall is now no more. Its remains being bulldozed into the ground as Phase 1 of the new Swatera Exchange is expected to be completed by 2026. But. As with the discovery of Crystal Palace and the Big Pit those many years ago, we'll see how long the ground holds up on this new development. Thank <laughs> you.